Senator Larry Hicks, thanks for joining us on Eye on the Issues. Of course, the uh, Wyoming legislative session just recently ended. Let's begin by getting your take on how you think it went. A mixed bag. Uh, you know, there were some, some, some wins and some losses, some good things, some things that that didn't go so well. Uh, and uh, like all things, it just comes for what your per political perspectives are and then where you're at within the, the political spectrum as, as to the success or failure of the last session. What issues were you most pleased with uh, in terms of what measures passed? And and let's, let's start, start with that. Well, I, to me, I'm a fiscal conservative, so obviously the, to me, the biggest win was the ability to take a significant amount of one-time um, revenue uh, for minerals and property taxes and sock that away for intergenerational equity. Uh, roughly 25 to 30 percent of our general fund uh, is funded through interest and dividends off those and investments. It's our third largest source of revenue in the state of Wyoming, so the more that we can put away for future generations, the longer we can stave off. Uh, it, it, I wish I could say we could stave off the growth of government, but at least we'll be able to help fund some of the future growth in government as that occurs with those investment earnings that we put away. You know, roughly uh, permanent and then in long-term reserve accounts, about $1.4 billion. That should generate in the neighborhood, you know, if, if the previous trailing five years, that would have generated about 60 million a year for our K through 12 program and then general fund government. Uh, looking forward, we're probably not gonna have the, uh, with the cheap, the zero interest rates that fueled a lot of the economy over the last decade, we're probably, but still it's a significant source of revenue. It, it st still could very well be $30 million a year just in investment earnings. And let's talk about measures that you wish had seen the, the light of day and passed that did not. Uh, some of the stuff that I, I would have liked to have seen, particularly, I think we passed a lot of stuff out of the uh, the Senate that, that failed in the House. Uh, the ESG policies is, 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 is what we invest money in and uh, not doing business with some of those companies that have pretty... Uh, aggressive ESG policies. I would have liked to have seen that to, to pass the, the legislature as the whole, uh, as a social conservative, some of the other legislative, particularly as it deals with some of the transgender uh, issues that we have going on in the state. I wish some of those would have passed. Um, so on the social side, I don't think we did as well as we did on the fiscal side uh, of the equation. And some of that stuff, I, I would have preferred that we would have gotten across the finish line. What was your stance on Medicaid expansion? Uh, well, there was an introduced bill, but it never made it out of any of the committees. So I'm not an expansionist uh, supported. Uh, you know, it already, government already controls, it's one of the biggest uh, sources of government control of our economy right now. And, and quite frankly, it's just one more step towards to a single payer with socialized federal health care. And so I think we need to, in my opinion, we need to fight that off. You know, we get keep being told over and over again, Wyoming's one of the few that hasn't seen the light. And I would argue we've seen the light. Mm -hmm. Socialized health care doesn't work. Uh, how I don't about, see anybody, I, I just don't see long lines trying to get into VA hospitals, mm. you know. Understood. Anyway. How, how about election integrity? I think we did better there. Um, I think it's something that we needed to work on. Uh, we were successful. I mean, one of the issues we got was um, better ID at the voting booth. Um, crossover voting is a big issue in Wyoming whether you believe it or not. Um, it, does, it has had significant impacts, we know, uh, in a couple of statewide races uh, in the past. And so uh, it was a high priority for the voters. So I'm glad we got that across the finish line. Let's talk about the uh, legalization, possible legalization of, of marijuana. I understand there's talk about Cheyenne possibly voting on the legalization of marijuana. Your thoughts on the issue? 
I don't know that Wyoming, so it, there's, it, it depends on the nature. So, you know, legalization is a broad topic from a standpoint, does that mean medical marijuana? Does it mean personal use? Is it decriminalization? Um, you know, it's a very broad subject that you have to take and parse each one of those out because they have their own separate nuances. So just to say legalize marijuana, um, I would say Wyoming's not there yet. I think there's other areas that may be under consideration um, along those lines, but I don't see I don't see Wyoming uh, doing like our neighbors and have complete legalization. And speaking of, of marijuana, I think you're right. I think the de decriminalization actually, I think is how Cheyenne is is possibly wording that. What, how would you feel if, if, if that vote did move forward and pass in Cheyenne? And do you think other cities around Wyoming might pick that up? Yeah, I don't know. My guess is, is what we would probably see from rural Wyoming is a preemption type of statutes that would preclude local jurisdictions from adopting that. I mean, we're a very small state and, and particularly Cheyenne is 20%, Laramie County is 20% of the state's population. Uh, but they're still part of the state of Wyoming and we're supposed to have a shared set of values. So I think it would be tough for any municipal or county jurisdiction to do that. Uh, if we're going to do it, we need a statewide solution, not patchwork local governments, you know, and, and the real trap there is, is what if you go from one jurisdiction to the next, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. And, and what are your thoughts on school choice? Absolutely the quicker that we can move to a voucher system of school choice competition and education is the one thing that may save the education system in this country you know and I, when we repeatedly see that we test well below some third world countries on the national average being middle of the pack within the united states is a pretty damn low bar nowadays no doubt no doubt now i know something that i believe you were uh pushing forward was the border wall funding. Obviously, Wyoming's not a border state, but really in this day and age, every state's a border state. And I know you had been talking about and pushing the idea of giving money to Texas, Arizona, New Mexico that did not move forward, but I believe you were a supporter of that. Tell, tell me about that support. Well, I just think this is, this is when you see a federal government that fails on their basic fiduciary responsibility to protect the citizens of this state, and our sovereign borders, then it's incumbent upon the states to step, step up and fulfill that role. Um, there's, you know, we're, we're affected by everything that goes on. We don't know where all these illegals are being deposited around the United States. They ultimately end up in our communities. Uh, um, the drugs are rampant. Our DCI has seen, you know, 700% increase in fentanyl interceptions in the last two years. This is a problem that affects everybody. That's the United States border. It's the border of the United States, not just Texas, Arizona, New Mexico. So I still think we have an obligation there. And, and give me a react, reaction to what Texas is actually doing. Um, obviously, Greg Abbott has taken some extra steps that other states have not in terms of starting to build the border wall again um, and putting a, a group of uh, law enforcement down along the border and doing what they can. To, to stop the human smugglers that many of them, in many cases, you probably heard this, are Americans that are getting paid big dollars to bring illegals into this country, further into the country. Yeah, I, I, I support everything that Greg Abbott's done down there on the southern border, and I wish I could compel my colleagues to, to send a little assistance their way. You know, Wyoming the, and the governor has done a few things, uh, but there's certainly a hell of a lot more we should be doing. Let's talk about energy in your state. I know there's been some talk about nuclear energy in Wyoming. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? I'm an all above guy. Uh, it's reliable, it's dispatchable. Um, and, uh, you know, I think we need all of the above. Uh, if we want grid reliability and we want energy independence and not being held hostage to foreign uh, producers of energy, then, then we need an all above strategy. What goes through your mind when you hear about what initially came out of Washington shortly after Joe Biden took office in respect to drilling and leasing on federal lands? Well, I 
probably shouldn't use four letter words in this interview, mm -hmm. but you get the point. Mm -hmm. I think it's absolutely ridiculous to cripple this economy with with some unrealistic agenda that but by 2030, we're gonna be fossil fuel free. Uh, only an imbecile would go out and, and espouse something like that that's completely unfeasible and, and unpractical to happen. Speaking of electric vehicles, green energy, things like that, and pushing away from fossil fuels, states like why anybody that's ever dealt with an electric vehicle, <laughs> states like Wyoming, Montana, Colorado, they're not going to fly because you get maybe 200, 250 miles per charge and that doesn't get you very far in those states don't you think well it's it's i've got a friend that uh, close friend that bought a tesla and he thought he would you know charge it with wyoming produce coal electricity and his first trip from rock springs to cheyenne that was supposed to have a 300 mile charge but with the 40 mile an hour wind and the 20 below zero temperature, he didn't even make it to Laramie before the battery was dead. Yeah, you got the heater going, the wind blowing, and it's 20 below. It's just not good for batteries. It, it, it's really a wake up call for that industry, especially when you get out to states like yours, no doubt about it. Yeah. So let's talk about your position as majority floor leader. What does that mean? What what? How does that separate you from the pack? Well, First, it's a, an election that's, you know, in the state of Wyoming, we're the most Republican dominated legislature. In the Wyoming Senate, there's 29 Republicans and two Democrats. We'd like to add them to the endangered species list <laughs> rather than grizzly bears, but we haven't accomplished that just yet. Um, but my job is basically to, to monitor and, and administer the flow of the sessions primarily. So what bills get heard, what time of the day, how many, how long we work, what our lunch breaks are, all of that stuff. So that's my primary responsibility in that capacity. I can hold back bills that I don't think that are either ready for prime time or it's something that may have made it out of committee that lacked overall support of the body and rather than waste an inordinate amount of time debating bills that won't pass anyway. I'm a little bit of a gatekeeper in that component. The other side that gets overlooked as part of that as, as being in leadership is, is we weigh in as the, as the Republican Party leadership and with our top five elected officials on a lot of the policy decisions that the state of Wyoming adopts, whether it's energy, water, natural resources, positions, uh, you know, whether we're going to participate in litigation against the federal government on a range of issues could be endangered species oil and gas leasing, um, any of those components uh, is really a very important component of the job is being in a, in a position to help effectuate and develop policy for the state of Wyoming. Tell me, what do you think was the high, for you at least, was the high point of this session? Uh, the day we left. <laughs> It, given that being the case, compare this year's to the last couple of sessions. Why why was this was this much different than the last couple of sessions, or are they all kind of like that? Um, I was very disappointed in the amount of money that we we spent, converse of what we saved, because we increased our our structural, our ongoing obligations by about 140 million which puts us back up to the second highest level budget that the state of Wyoming has ever had. Uh, we've got the, the most volatile uh, uh, income stream of almost any other state. So, you know, when you live off uh, minerals, North Dakota, Alaska, and Wyoming were the three most volatile income streams. You know, there's a big difference in our revenues associated with $4 natural gas or $2 natural gas is a 50% reduction you know, $110 barrel oil versus $60 barrel oil, you know, almost a 50% reduction in revenues. So my disappointments, I think, was was just the fact that we, we obligated too much ongoing expenditure this session. And, uh, you know, on the other side, as, as far as um, just getting out of there, is one of the things that happens as you move up in leadership, there's, there's more expectations and a higher workload. And so, uh, you know, Wyoming's a little bit different, you know, 
we're in there six weeks and we work 12 to 14 hours a day uh, and then we're out of there. And so it is a tremendous amount of work uh, and uh, kudos to everybody that participates in that. You know, we're, we're a citizen legislature. So, but it's a lot of work for the time that we spend in Cheyenne. Now you were born in Wyoming. You've lived there most of your life. What would you say is the best part about the state of Wyoming? We're the least populated state in the nation. If you don't like people, we're a great place to be. <laughs> and uh, can I ask you, what, what do you do with your free time? Do you like to hunt? Do you like to fish? Or how do you take advantage of what Wyoming has to offer? Now, all of the above, everything the state has. Uh, you know, we've got the most remote area in the lower 48, and I have a uh, a great affinity for that place because it's not crowded and there's not very many people. You know, we just have a wonderful opportunity with, uh, with the, you know, a lot of public land, the Rocky Mountains, uh, natural resources. If you want to do something out, uh, outdoors, this is the place to be. Is there anything that you would like to add that I'm not asking you? No, you've already asked too much. <laughs> okay. Senator Larry Hicks, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for joining us for Eye on the Issues.